Hi there, my name is Alan Richardson. In this quick video, I'm going to go over some of the initial setup steps that have changed from Selenium 1 to Selenium 2. So if you're following the book Selenium Simplified, this video should help you overcome some of your difficulties because that book hasn't been fully updated to Selenium 2 yet. Not very much has changed, but enough has changed that you may encounter some stumbling blocks through the initial steps. So this video will help you. So let's have a quick look. First of all, let's look at the downloads. People get confused about what to download with Selenium. Uh, the download page can be confusing, but here we have the download for version 2.0.0 of the Selenium server, formerly the Selenium RC server. So this is the main jar that we need to download. It's called Selenium Server Standalone 2.0.0.jar. So if I download this, I've already done a lot of these steps to keep this video short. The book does walk you through these steps, it just uses different names. So wherever in the book it said Selenium Server .jar, we want to use Selenium Server Standalone 2.0.0.jar. Let me quickly show you. This is what you would have got had you downloaded Selenium Remote Control 1.0.3 as in the book. And the Selenium Server is in this folder, Selenium Server 1.0.3, and there it is there, Selenium Server.jar. This is what the book talks about when it says include the Selenium Server.jar, uh, start up Selenium Server from the command line using Java minus jar Selenium Server. What we do now, using the Selenium 2.0.0 distribution, we want the Selenium Server standalone 2.0.0.jar. That is what we start up at the command line. If I go into the command line in the Selenium 2 folder that I've created, I run Java minus jar Selenium Server standalone 2.0.0.jar to start up my server. That is now the Selenium Server. And the other thing we need to download are the Selenium client drivers and we want this Java 2.0.0 here. The only thing we're going to use in this so if I imagine I've downloaded the zip, I've unarchived it, what I got were all of these things here the libs folder, the library for Selenium Java and the sources. All I really want are the sources. When I attach the source code from the from in the code, I want to attach this jar, Selenium Java 2.0 sources. This is the jar that I'm going to add into the build path in Eclipse, and this is the jar that has the source code. So in Eclipse, for my Selenium tests, if I look at the build path, you can see that I have the Selenium server standalone 2.0.0 jar, and that's all I've got in my build path from the Selenium distribution. In order to look at the source code, I have attached that source jar. So other things that people are stumbling over in the initial setup is using the IDE because the IDE has changed as well. So in the Selenium IDE 1.0.12, we used to be able, in using the source tab, to go into options and choose a format and see the source in the format in a different language and then just copy and paste from the source tab into Eclipse. We can't do that anymore. We have a clipboard format option which I've set to JUnit4 and what that does is when I copy and paste commands from the table they come across in the correct language format but they don't come across as a full test. So if I want to take a test that's been recorded in the IDE and put it into Eclipse I have to go into file and do export test case as and here's the JUnit4 remote control option that we're going to use. If I then save that to a file, exported test, I will load that into a text editor. And you can see now that the actual structure of the test has changed as well. Now the JUnit export has all the annotations, which in your book it doesn't. We don't cover the annotations until the, the chapter after the basic export. But you can pretty much ignore all that. The whole point of the export chapter in Selenium is to get you up and running quickly. So basically, I've exported a test from the IDE. I'm copying and pasting it. 
I'm going to put it into Eclipse here. Get rid of all this. This is the test pasted in. You can see that the package is incorrect because we want it in a different one. So I just delete that declaration because we've got two. This is exactly what the instructions in the book tell you to do. We've got a different name from the class file, so I'll just amend this. And you can see that the Selenese test case has been marked as deprecated in Selenium 2. That's fine. We only use that in one chapter, and we only use it because uh, the IDE exports the test in this way. But if I take this test, you can see that there's no other... I mean, these are all warnings about... Uh, Selenies being deprecated, but I can run this test as it is just now. So if I start up the server, so instead of doing java minus jar selenium server dot jar, I'm doing java minus jar selenium server standalone 2.0.0 dot jar. Start that up. I can run this test. Okay, you didn't see the windows because they were behind it, but it did run the test. And even though it's deprecated, it still works. If I want to remove the warnings, I'm going to jump ahead to one of the next chapters which explains how to do this. All I'll do is I'll create a Selenium variable in here. Now we've removed all the warnings. I'll get rid of this pattern, which again the book tells you to do. And there we have pretty much a test that you would construct, I think it's in chapter 9 from the book. Uh, of course the book is using Google. You can find instructions on the, the blog as to what the Google test looks like. But having done this, having got the setup correct, having installed the correct jars, from chapter 11 onwards you should be able to follow the book exactly. The hard part is simply, do you know which jar to install? And you do now. It's the Selenium Server Standalone 2.0.0.jar. You want to get the source code jar. In your build path, you add the Selenium Server Standalone Jar. So anywhere that you saw Selenium Server Jar, you use Selenium Server Standalone 2.0.0 Jar. Instead of copying and pasting from the IDE, you save it to a file and load it in. You're going to need an editor which shows uh, Unix file lines. I use Notepad++. You could use WordPad from Windows if you want. Notepad will show all this on a single line. But hopefully that's enough to get you started. So I have written a blog post on how to use Selenium 2 with Selenium Simplified, which covers some of the which covers the details we explained here. It also covers how to use HTML suites. It covers what to download. It explains the Selenium test case being deprecated. It explains save as from the IDE. It explains which browsers to use. It also covers some of the test amendments that you will have to do in order to get the tests as written in the book working and some of the things that have changed with some of the uh, the browsers but really not very much not very much has changed the stumbling block that people face at the moment is how to use the id how to get the tests out of the id and which jars to use we've covered that in this video you should be good to go if you've got any issues just email me using the email address in the book and in the ebook and you should have that on the emails if you bought the e if you did buy the ebook in the download page that you've been sent in your email, you can download a beta version of the book as it gets updated for Selenium 2.0. So I hope that helps. That's basically how you install uh, Selenium 2 and get it running with the IDE to use the Selenium Simplified book.